This is a screen or a basket out for the chipper. So when it chips it, it lets it go through these holes here. But sometimes you get long sticks going through. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these plates on. It's like a baffle, so if a stick goes through it, it's that. And twists and then gets double chopped. So I'm going to put, I think, four on here now. We've just been cutting it. I'm going to go on like that. Whoever took the grab off last didn't didn't do what we call float the hydraulics to let the pressure out. So now when Richard's come to plug the pipes in, there's pressure in the pipes so they won't plug in. So we're gonna have to crack the pipes off at this end and let the pressure out and then plug them in. So we're just doing it now where the wood chip is, because any oil that spills out will just go in the wood chip and go to the boiler. It'll only be like an egg cup club. Crack that, and there's lit, not even an egg cup full of oil. It's like it's a tablespoon. That. Let's just plug it out in there. Gonna get the angle right. That's the dip not floated. I'm sure Christine's hiding around this corner. Off shot. Ha! <laughs> Just come down the ditch now to see how bad it is so it's flooded on chris and danny's side and then obviously on our side as well where the pumps aren't keeping up that water there is i don't know 10 times as amount flowing down it than would normally flow down it it's about 18 foot wide in normal sort of weather conditions and low flow it's about four foot wide at the bottom but if you imagine it's kind of that shape the banks so there's a a lot of water in there and there's still a lot still to come so far we've had um this this month I think we've had 60 mil of rain sorry in the last week we've had 60 mil of rain so that's um i worked it out them square qb tanks ibc things that the lads put logs in each grain trailer so the red the, sorry the red it's bloody yellow aren't they so the yellow grain trailers that we were messing with the sheep with yesterday there's enough water fell in the last week into one of them that had filled one of them ibcs so if you imagine that then on a field scale how many of them trailers you'd fit side by side in the field? How many tons of water? Because each one of them full of water would be a ton. How many tons is falling on the ground all the time? And then head into the streams, head into the rivers, head into the sea. That's why it's important to keep these kept empty and clean at the bottom. Yeah, that, that's an IBC. So it's an in, intermediate bonded container it stands for. Um, they're basically a metre by a metre by a metre. So they're exactly a a square meter a cubic tank sometimes they're called because they're a cubic meter so they hold a thousand liters of water which weighs a ton so like i said there's enough rain fell in the last seven days in one of our grain trailers to fill one of them yeah so enough waters fell in one of them to fill one of them tanks so just remember that it's quite quite a lot of water Sam must have wet the bed this morning. It's before 10 and he's here. Can anyone guess what I'm going to use some talcum powder for on the wood chipper? This conveyor belt sticking, so I'm going to put some of that on the inside so that it breaks better. And we'll see if that works. Yeah, the belt under here has gone off that direction, this conveyor belt. For the discharge on the back, so uh, we've unblocked it and it found a stick jammed in it. So we've sorted that out, but it keeps wanting to, to run on its rollers that direction. So I'm slacking this side off, pull the roller in a bit, and it should force it this way, hopefully. Just on the fence, gonna go around the block and just see how flooded everywhere is. So I'll have a, a bit of a better view over the hedges on this. Andrew's uh, gonna take that to the scrapyard. So anyone wanna guess the weight? of the old grain bit, I guess 2.8 tons. Has anyone got a jet ski? We've got about 20 acres underwater. The ditch over there has burst, not burst its banks, but it's basically overflowed either side into, into my field and the neighbor's field. So I've just come down with the tractor, so we're about, well, there's a gate post there, if you can see it. So I don't know, we've got about 
three foot of water here and then it goes deeper and deeper so at the deepest point there it's probably about eight eight or nine feet maybe so if anyone's got a jet ski or a boat and want to play here's where you need to be was at the other day where this road floods it so it's still flowing out the field and now they've had to close this road now because it's so flat, badly flooded looks like the drains can't take it because uh, instead of water going down that manhole cover it's bubbling back out of it so obviously the road just closed if you look from up here that's the ditch there it's overflowed that side and this side it uh, goes on for miles like I say, it's about 20 acres underwater. That's all underwater, but it's really big reed, so it's hard to see. Just uh, that there's a field flooding that we're going to be putting wheat on. It has spuds on it last year, and um, all the water's running off it. So I'm going to go and see if we can make a dam with a bucket and stop it flooding the houses. Just got Jeremy Vine on, talking about footpaths. And George Monbiot, eh? why he's an expert on footpaths is beyond me. I just get, get a video of it blowing out. <laughs> I know, yeah, all the carrots are flowing out of the field. Wash carrots. This this is normally free draining land, but it's absolutely full to the brim. So we've been digging soil and putting the gateways, making dams, but it's getting near the top of them already, and it's flooding the houses further down the road. Um, it's obviously helped give them give them an hour of protection, but. Um, these carrots are not mine, but there's someone else's, and they've not been able to dig them yet because it's so wet. And then we were going to put wheat on it, I think. These houses are some of the worst affected. Lovely house, but it's just about to go through the door. It's coming out that field there, and I think the house is actually flooded as well. Just add the Merlot, pushing that soil back, trying to bund it up behind the hedge stop the water flowing out flowing down there to the old lady's house just digging some of your spuds with a bucket Richard to block someone's driveway that's flooding an old lady up the road that should stop it and they've got some carrots and spuds as well if they need it later on just notice this flood here and the stream's a lot lower so I've just dug that trench along there now with the bucket it's all flowing into the stream now, so that's good. Got a little waterfall now. Film it from over here, see better. Look at that. It's fairly flowing past that. I think I've just found a dead BMW flashing its lights at me. This is where it was flooded before. Yeah, that guy in the Land Rover is towing him out because he's got a rope, but I'm not going to go through there because this is the air intake of the Merlot here, and this is where the water went up to then. And uh, I didn't go any further because I think it's too deep there, so I'll have to go around the other way because I don't trust that seal. It seals that air intake to here. So I'll go around the block because I'm not doing the engine on the Merlot. That guy's BM will be written off though. All his front end smashed in. He's obviously at the water that hard. And obviously he's gone in his engine and made it snapped his con rods and blew the head off his engine. So that's for the bin now. I'm really struggling a bit to tell it out. I don't know why. Well, it's because he's got the handbrake on and he snapped the rope. Well, the electrics are all empty, the handbrake off, and start the engine. We'll put it in neutral. Another BMW driver chancing his luck through the floods. Don't know why they think they can do it. So, this is where the grid was bubbling before on the tractor. And now I wouldn't drive through that because I thought the water was too deep for the telehandler. So, I went around the block. The BMW driver is still there because his tow rope snapped and now someone else has tried driving through it and the car's now floating in the middle. Yeah, that guy's stuck. So the lads have gone back to get her um, The lads have gone to get a tractor with bigger bigger wheels and a higher air and taking a trailer to get him out, but that Land Rover's yeah, going to try and get him. No, no, don't know who that is. Just jump in. Well, they'll go through quite a bit, to be fair.
thought rather than like get everything wet and hold on the track that we uh, back down to the bell trail and the track's not going to go deep just not for sure we're over that it's not on the track Got his light vest on. Come on, mate, you can do it. I don't know where the firemen are, just stand on the trailer. Oh, there we go. Um, they just stand on the trailer. That was hands. I hope they <laughs> just step off the edge. Be a bit of a splash. There we go, down the water slide of the of the windscreen. There we go, he's on the trailer now. That's why you shouldn't drive through floods, people. There he comes. <laughs> Step through it to the fireman. Oh, well, he's six months out. This track will be to real one. Obviously the water level's still rising, so back here now with the police putting more soil to stop uh, people's driveways fully. So we've been putting soil in them driveways there and then blounding up all the side of the road in the field side to try and stop the water coming out. Hopefully that should hold it back. Stop it flooding all these million pound houses. Beautiful. There you go, water lane full of water. So that's, this is the answer to yesterday's quiz question, it's a universal joint, so basically you can, it's a shaft that'll turn at an angle and um, as you turn it, it'll still send drive through, it's a bit hard to explain so let me prop my phone up so you can see. Yeah so when it turns, it'll so always stay, keeping the drive through, not round, so you can basically put a drive around the bend. This is the screen now for the chipper. Adam's welded all the baffles on it. So we're gonna put it in tomorrow and try it. It's like a, a mad toast rack or letter rack. That's the one we took out. It's got bigger holes in it. So we're putting this one in with smaller holes in, trying to get the chipper better standard. Today's quiz question, sponsored by Sher. Does anyone know what that is? And if you do know, what category is it? That's about it for today now. Um, that's been really handy, making dams, stopping people's houses flooding. They did breach, so we had to go back. That's why I went back and filmed in the dark again. Um, so thanks for watching everyone. Uh, as I say, if you know what, if you think you know what that thing is, tell me what category it is in the comments. If, you, if you're guessing, have a guess. And if you're certain, click like. I'm cold and wet now, just like that guy that was on top of that car roof. He went back into the factory where he'd come out of, had a hot shower, warmed up, so he should be all right. He was about 70. Um, the council were a bit panicked because their car had gone flat.
because the bat did left the lights on. So top tip, don't leave your lights on if you're responding to a flood. Then don't jump it with a Volkswagen because it goes into limp mode and then you can't move the other car that you've jumped it with. So you end up with two stranded council vehicles. And then also, when your lads are on overtime sorting out floods, check the weather because now it's going to freeze tonight and there's not going to enough staff to drive the gritters. So it's going to be terrible on the road tonight because there's going to be ice everywhere because there's so much water about. So stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you all tomorrow.